What's your name? Bond. James Bond. What's yours? She reflected. Ryder. What Ryder? Honey child. Bond smiled. What's so funny about it? Nothing, honey child Ryder. It's a pretty name. She unbent. People call me Honey. Well, I'm glad I met you. Welcome to the James Bond Complex, the podcast that takes on the James Bond phenomena from Fleming to film to everything in between. Mm. I am Matt. I'm Edgar. And today we are talking about the sixth book by Ian Fleming, Dr. No. Oh, yes. From 1958, if I'm not mistaken. Thereabouts. I have my, my own um, little synopsis that Thank I wrote. Good, because I didn't read the book. I need to know what happens in this. <laughs> it's been a few months since the events of From Russia with Love. James Bond is declared fit for duty, but to spare the agent, M, the head of the Secret Service, assigns 007 to an easy assignment in beautiful Jamaica. The case is to be a simple one. Uncover the link between the death of members of the Autobond Society on the island of the reclusive Guano exporter, Dr. No, and the disappearance of James Bond's one-time ally, John Strangways. Teamed up with Quarrel, his other ally during the Live and Let Die affair, Bond avoids multiple assassination attempts from poison fruits to vehicular manslaughter and even venomous centipedes. All signs of the investigation lead to one place and one man, Dr. No's crab key. Of course... Bond and Quarrel head to the island. To their surprise, they are greeted by the new bile seashell collector on a child rider. The trio quickly finds themselves being targeted by a group of armed goons. The chase eventually brings doom to Quarrel as he's burnt alive by Dr. No's mechanical tractor dragon. James and Ani are taken captive and finally are greeted by Dr. No during dinner. No explains his origins and goals to 007. He's a former accountant for the Tongs that managed to steal millions from them, but not without costs. Both of his hands were cut off and replaced with mechanical pincers. This didn't stop Dr. No's ambition. He teamed up with the Russians to build his own guano empire, as well as a station to disrupt American missile tests in the Caribbean. Bond tries to make a deal for his and Ani Ryder's safety, but the good doctor already has other plans for his guest. Ani is to be fed to crabs, while Bond is put into a dangerous and lethal obstacle course. 007 uses all of his wits and instincts to survive a maze of electric shocks, lethal spiders, and a giant man-eating octopus. Bruised, bleeding, and exhausted, Bond not only survives and escapes, but also manages to kill Dr. No by burying the maniac under a pile of bird dung before escaping Crab Key with Ani Rider. That's Dr. No in a nutshell. In a nutshell. My goodness, you uh, gave a lot of plot points there. But uh, it's a hell of a story. I, I'm, I was puzzled by this book because I didn't remember. I didn't remember liking it as much as I did this time. And it feels like the character of Bond has not peaked, but has finally arrived as we know him today. Like I, I feel like I, like it was a very macho story. I feel like Bond is ugh, there. Uh, that may be because he's coming off of his his severe and almost lethal injury in From Russia with Love, so he's been a little bit battered and bruised, mm -hmm. so to speak. He spent some time in the hospital recuperating. And what he thinks and dislikes about this mission, that it'll be easy, it'll be simple, there won't be much to it. Well, it turns out to be kind of his hardest mission ever, at least from a physical and psychological standpoint. The yes. endurance test, as you alluded to in your description, he's never done anything. He's never had to live through anything like that in the books. Even the boots, the, 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 uh, the cleat stamping on Diamonds Forever. He is, fainted. Is, yeah, it's nothing. I mean, this is this is insane what he has to do here. Like something switches in his mind and it's a great moment in the book. But it feels like like the first book he he was trapped, he was tortured, but he didn't didn't do anything in in case no well so in some way didn't do any uh hard action. Had his heart broken. Had his heart, yeah. That's it. 
uh, live and let die. Okay, a little bit more of action, action but in the end, uh, to survive, he just slowed the villain by talking, and he just tried to out out outlive the villain because the the villain's gonna die because mm. he put a mine on the ship. Yeah. Uh, uh, the third book, uh, this one, there's a little bit it's more. It's not bad because there's, there's the shaft sequence where they're uh, yeah. using, I think, hot air or hot steam, I think. They're and there's out. also the cliff uh, yeah, that's true. attempt. Uh, Diamonds Are Forever, like we said during that episode, it feels a mission that's under, un beneath them. Yeah. And it's it's a lesser book. I, we didn't really like this book that much. No, not so much. And From Russia With Love. There's not that much action until the end, and how the book ends, he he kind of gets, gets a his, little prick. Yeah, he gets his ass in into himself. Like he he goes to the hospital, so in a way he loses. So he's never had to prove himself to be like a macho, like E-man type uh, character. And this in this story, he does. Mm -hmm. So that's. Mm -hmm. uh, Something I notice about this book as well, and we get it straight away from the first chapter, is uh, now I know it's not the first time we go to Jamaica. We've been to Jamaica and live and let die. Uh, so we return to Jamaica in Dr. No. Fleming is having so much fun describing Jamaica this time around. From the very first chapter, he's describing the street that leads to the Queen's Club and how the sounds that appear from the jungles, uh, like the crickets and such, when the sun sets and the lights from the bars and the stores that turn and the people that start flowing. He, mm. He's talking about the different types of traffics, day traffic and evening traffic, when people are going to their sanka sets and stuff like that. I felt, you know, it feels like every, every time we record a book episode, I say something like, oh, Fleming's so good at describing things. Fleming's enjoying describing things so much. So I, I sound like a broken record. But I felt it in a different way this time because he's describing his, he gets to play again in his favorite backyard, which is Jamaica. <laughs> I, I, there is something so magical about Jamaica. And I noticed that this, whenever it's night in this, in this book, he's always talking about the stars. Even when they go into Dr. No's underground lair and they see the, the, aquarium so to speak it's not really an aquarium it's more of just a glass that goes out to the sea where you can see the sea but they're not they're not so far underground that they can't see the sky and, and even in that moment bond notices like the twinkling stars so, i guess because there's not much of a major metropo metropolitan area on the jamaican island looking up upwards at night must be like the most magical thing ever so anyways it's just something i noticed from the very first chapter like he's just having a huge boner like describing jamaica in this book i mean like i i took down some notes there there's mentions of uh well we see it in the movie there's there's a few locations that they refer in the book and they also show up in the movie um like the uh queen's club it's been renamed the liguena club uh and they changed a little bit of the layout uh, the roof is now green as it's, I think it's completely mm. white originally. And uh, the first chapter, it describes how, uh, well, John Strangway, just, just like in the movie, uh, mm. gets murdered. Mm. Um, but we see how they dispose of the bodies, which we don't. And in, in, the, in the movie, uh, it's not mentioned, but they dump, dump them in the uh, Mona Reservoir. And... Uh, there it is. Like if you Google it, it's a rather vast uh, reservoir. It's more or less like in the shape of a how, uh, pentagon. How, how deep is this thing? It feels like you take a swim in there, you could probably find a body easily. <laughs> no, well, they, they also weigh down the bodies um, so that they don't float. I would imagine, but I don't know. It doesn't look particularly large. I can't imagine it's particularly deep either. It was just a thought that came to mind. <laughs> I, I also, I want to go to the timeline because I was, I figure out the timeline. Um, from Russia, what love happens in uh, August to well, mid mid August around late summer, so to speak. Uh, this starts in March. It starts because they're in complaining about the weather. I think it's like it's particularly cold for March or something like that. But the Autobahn Society, uh, which it's more or less bring in motion the entire events of Dr. No. Uh, they get, because, uh, okay, it's going to be complex if I tell the story, but originally what happened is that there's a bird, the uh, Rosetta... Ro Bean spool? Uh, Spoonbill? Spoonbill. Yeah. 
Uh, it's a rare bird that's um, the Ottoman society, um, which does still exist. They're like a conservationist uh, group, kind of like a uh, gr like, uh, Greenpeace. Like the, kind of like the Ian Fleming Foundation. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Obadon, Ad um, they're, uh, they're, they've been incorporated since 1905, and they protect rare birds in North America. Well, they sent uh, a group of uh, wardens to uh, protect uh, those birds, which are located on Crab, pre crab, <laughs> crab Key. Crappy uh, Key. Crappy Key. Crab Key, a privately owned uh, uh, island, by uh, an island owned by Dr. No. And um, because they're trying to protect the birds and they're disrupting the operation, Dr. No's operation, uh, they're murdered by a uh, mechanical dragon. But one of them escapes and makes it to the mainland, but he's badly injured. Uh, it doesn't live very long. Doesn't very, but it has the time to tell them. Look, there's a dragon. Blah blah blah. That hap that entire murder attempt attempt uh, happens in de December. By late January, uh, Strangways is on the case, but he's murdered. And uh, between February and March, uh, there's no communication. Is there between the first murder, the two people that I had set up camp in the jungles of Crab Key, and Strangways investigation? Is there not? The Audubon Society sent a couple people by plane, I think, but the plane I crashes. Think. There's a mechanical failure. and I thought it was the same people. Oh, no, you're right. I made a mistake. Th there are people that are, like, hiding out in the jungles. Yeah. And then there's also this plane, which mysteriously malfunctions upon landing on Crab Key. So it brings uh, attention to... Uh, a little too much. Too like, much. Dr. No, come on, guy. Like You should be a little smoother than this. Yeah. He's not, well, he's not as sharp as he, as he is in the, uh, in the movie. We'll find out uh, later. Um, um, so uh, Strangways is investigating. Um, he gets murdered. Uh, he get, him and his uh, secretary uh, get... Uh, True blood. True, true blood, yes. I like that name. It's a shame that she dies so quick. Though. I would have liked to have had like a true blood around. Yeah. yeah. Maybe she has a sister. <laughs> Bring her back in the continuation novel. Uh, uh, Susie True Blood. Mm. Um, so uh, he gets murdered. She gets. She, they disappear for a while. There's no contact between them and London. So London, in uh, I think early March, uh, Bond is sleet. The I remember M even M who never c c worries about the weather like makes a comment to his driver like God damn sleet or whatever it is. Yes, I, I actually I tried to get the weather for that. I, th I think they mentioned the date, but I. Um, I was not able to get statistics. Why am I not surprised <laughs> you'd look into that? Yeah, sometimes I'm able to get more information, but I was disappointed. I mean, you couldn't find that? No, I couldn't. Look at these pitiful notes you're coming with. This I know. Week, this There's, week. I only have 65 pages. In my house. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is, I'm sorry to disappoint you. Um, so, a bond is uh, declared fit for duty, and um, this time. Uh, in chapter two, we um, also find out the name of the drug he was administrated, uh, he was uh, poisoned with, actually, uh, in um, the previous book. Japanese type of drug. Yeah. Fugu. Fugu. It's, it's, it's those, those inflating sh fish. Oh, is that the one where, like, the crazy rumors, well, if the chef doesn't prepare it well yes. enough, you're done? And I tell you, that, that's, that's, that's correct. That's, okay, that's, that's not a rumor. <laughs> no, it's not a rumor. <laughs> but most of the people are very well trained. Anthony Borden actually uh, went around the world and he tasted Anthony, it. Anthony Boredom? Boredom? <laughs> isn't, isn't, isn't I think it's Bourdain. Bourdain. It's like, it's Francais, but it, 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 he doesn't speak French, so it's, it's Bourdain. Like, uh, it's like yeah. if I try But it sounded like you said Boredom. Chapu. chapu. Yeah. Chapit. Going back to chapter two, I find it funny that just a few weeks ago we were talking about uh, Diamonds Are Forever with an episode that's actually just, we just released this week yes. as of this recording. And um, we kept referring to you especially, but I agreed with you wholeheartedly. You know, M is like, ah, I'm sorry for sending you on this dumb mission. It's beneath you. That's kind of what they think the, it's going to yes. be this time around. It's going to be a good time. Go catch some sun. And, and, and Bond doesn't like this. Bond says, Bond's damn you. I, well, he, internally, he, he would never dare say this to M's face, but he's like, damn you, you challenge me. Give me something serious. I don't need fun in the sun. It's, it's his, I, I don't think it's... This is punishment. But I don't think the, the buddy has been as severely damaged as his ego was after uh, from Russia with love. I think he, he, he feels like he was, uh, like the entire goal of the, uh, the Russian was to humiliate him, and they kind of did. They, they hurt his ego. Oh, come on, man. He got, he got taken down by an old toad, an old puppet toad. Give me a break, man. 
Yeah. Come on, Bond. And she's dead. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, what happened to her? Uh, she's dead. She's next, dead. Next line. I'm like, oh, <laughs> damn it. You know, uh, back to the book itself. Uh, we are finally introduced to Major Boothroy. I mean, the real Q. Yes, no, exactly. The, the gentleman who uh, actually... This chapter, this is a big, this is a big chapter in James Bond history uh, for a few reasons. One, it's uh, there was a major Boothroyd, so it's almost this chapter is actually quite meta because there was in fact a major Boothroyd mm -hmm. who did in fact suggest to Ian Fleming that James Bond should have a different gun, the Walther, as opposed to the Beretta, which is exactly what happens in this chapter. So it's like real life. I'm pretty sure like the, the dialogue they have is probably dialogue. The conversation that. between Fleming and Booth. Because <laughs> apparently they had the uh, current pardons for years. And he only passed away. He was born in 1925. He died in 2001, which is like. Lived a hell of a lot longer than Fleming. Yeah. But, and I, I, there, there were so much. Well, there's so much thing. Uh, I, I've heard the story about the. Uh, you probably heard the story about the gun. Because uh, he. Uh, he was actually uh, uh, investigated for a murder um, uh, of because uh, the, the gun that the uh, one of the guns the the owned was actually super rare. Boothroyd or Fleming? Boothroyd, and the police uh, actually um, asked him, uh, "Do you have? You, you, uh, we heard you have this gun. Uh, do you have it?" And uh, Boothroyd was like, uh, "I don't have it with no. me. No, I don't. Um, okay, that's suspicious. It, it was a uh, twenty-five uh, point twenty-five caliber. Uh, no, wait." Uh, no, no, that's not that's not. Oh, wait, it's a point thirty eight Smith and Wes Wesson uh, sub nose revolver, um, and how he was able to prove that he did not like he had a, his alibi was actually he lent that particular gun to the cover illustrator who was doing the cover from Russia with Love. Get out of here! Yeah, it's a true story, <laughs> and this is where he gets his mission. Oh, th there he goes. Uh, it, it looks like a dumb pelican. I, I looked it up because, you know, they keep, well, they, they mention it less uh, later on in the story because the birds are not important at that point. But at, at the beginning, the first few chapters, they're constantly talking about this spoonbill. And uh, I'm like, what the heck does this thing look like? I, so I, I took about it. It's not the nicest looking bird. It's it looks dumb. Fine. It looked like a dumb, dumb bird. Well, all birds bird. look dumb to me. But, uh. um, so we meet with Quarrel. 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 Um, I like Quarrel in this book. He's awesome. I, I you know, he, he is pretty good. You have to get a little bit used to his speech pattern. That's another thing Fleming does a lot. He, he, he Fleming must have a very good uh, ear for accents and speech patterns because he will write to the best of his his abilities. He will like translate the pronunciations, the local, colorful vernacular, the vernacular, if you will, into pro or not prose, but into dialogue in the book. I don't think a lot of authors do that. He does that to the best of his ability. So when you are reading Quarrel's dialogue, you're reading the dialogue spoken by a Cayman Islander, a local who has, you know, very, from how you and I speak English, a very, comp very different way of talking the language. Puts his H's with words that don't have H's and adds, and does not have an H in words that do have it's H's. It's like um, for French Canadian, uh, Canadians, um, the joie, the uh, more colloquial yeah. way of talking that yeah. you have compared to the Francais de France, it's more or less what, what he does. And it's it's funny. Sometimes it's puzzling. There's little expressions. Um, we make, When they have that confrontation with the... And she has a name um, that in the movie she doesn't... Annabelle Chung? Uh, the, uh, the photographer. The, Daily Glean, the freelance photographer or whatever she is from the Daily Glean. Or? He, um, he, like, I, I'm not sure, but I think he fancies her. Like I've, oh, I've he definitely fancies her. I've but he fancies her for like a really bizarre reason, like the little piece of skin here on the hand that he like bites into. Like, like oh, he, what's it called? The, the Mount the, Venus? The, something like that? the Love Mount or something. The Love Mount. Venus is shag got, shack. It, it, hers <laughs> got nothing but a big bruise on her Love's Mount. But boy, was that a fat Love Mount. Yeah. I come back after that girl sometime. <laughs> if my story is the, pr the truth. Oh, thank God you quoted that. But yeah, so Quirrell's a hell of a character. <laughs> so yeah, he. But I kind of like him. It's like a little bit of. Uh... He's very old school. He's very local. He's very old school. I would I wouldn't say traditional. That's maybe not the right word to use. But he he has a particular view of 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 his of his habits and of his women. Let's yeah. say, and uh, yeah, no, it's like he he will beat the crap out of her. But you know, when all this is over, I'll, 
I'll check and see if she's available. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I kind of like that um, that aspect of him. He's a little bit more uh, macho than he is. Like, I'm, I'm going to bring the There's movie. There's something for the millennials to... Why don't you read Dr. No? <laughs> yes, you should. You should. If you're a millennial, forget, forget read, 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 read Dr. No. The movie's nothing. The movie's a joke. No, uh, yes. <laughs> um, yeah, no. Uh, then we move to... Uh, we're introduced to... Uh, well, the governor, which... Uh, a real douche. Douche, really. Uh, stuck like, up. Stuck up. The thing is about the governor, we can't, you know, we can't be too rough on this governor. It's only a temporary position. The previous governor, and, and we, everybody know, everybody on the island, know, well, everybody on the island, everybody who manages sort of the, the colonial, governmental, municipal uh, apparatus uh, knows that this guy's only here for a few months, so he really doesn't want to be troubled. Let's not be too hard on him, Matthew. He just wants a cozy few months. Also, he's on, they're on the verge of losing that island. Like the British, uh, I think the, the, the book was released in 50, uh, 58. By the time they're doing the movie, uh, Jamaican's completely uh, independent. independent. Yeah. And when you think about it, uh, Cuba is on the like in 50, 59, they're on the verge of losing, like this Cuba uh, becoming communist. Yeah. So there's, there's there's trouble brewing in the Caribbeans around that time. One person's trouble. One one person's troublemaker is another person's freedom fighter. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's the first poison attempt, which is that's something that's not in the book. Uh, that's not. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Um, We've been reviewing the movie uh, this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> that's the, the the attempt at uh, poisoning Bond, which like. He, he receives um, a fruit basket. A fruit basket, <laughs> and he's immediately like, "I didn't order that." And he notices. I don't understand what he notices. Like he re notices like a slit on the fruit. Yeah, what the heck is it that he notices? And it's on every piece of fruit. Yeah, it's in some. It's the injection point. Ah, and then he sends it to his. Well, we talked about the lieutenant governor, or governor, or whatever his, his title is, but he does have an ally, which is Plato Smith. Mm -hmm. uh, who we do see a little bit in the film. But Plato yes. Smith, he seems to get along with Plato Smith. Plato Smith is more, a little bit, well, maybe a little bit older than James Bond, but they seem to have... Uh, they're on the same... Uh, they're on the same wavelength, you know. About the same age. Um, then we are... Uh, there's a but the, you're talking about the poison attempt. Yeah, there, well, I mean, he, he, he just looks at that, and he's, he throws it, and then... He, he just picks one and he sends it to get analyzed. And it turns out later that, yeah, uh, don't eat that. Uh, you're going to die. Mm -hmm. That's one of the first attempts on his life. And there's a part also where, because uh, 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 Quarrel is using the same car that a Strangway, a Strangway is used to drive, which is a <laughs> They real come up with a funny plan about this. Uh. Yeah, but it, like I, I didn't catch like it. I listened to the audio book twice and i read really quickly the book itself when i'm taking down my notes and it it, it just it, that then works but when those two poor saps I that get because um well, the, the idea is you know what let's keep on using that car but here's how we'll do this is bond spend explaining this to quarrel here's how we'll do it we'll hire a couple of schmucks <laughs> who kind of look like us, they'll kind of dress like us, and they will use Strangways' car, and we'll send him off to whatever far-off place on the island. Because I think Dr. Noah is hunting us down. He's spying on us. They've already tried to kill me once. So let's, let's hire a couple of schmucks. They'll use Strangways' car, and we'll pay him a few dollars. But we found out the next day through the newspaper that, yeah, Dr. Noah did find them and killed them. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <Yeah>. Oops. <laughs> Better not tell anyone. Oopsie. Dr. Noah, as an agent... She's a character in the movie, but she, she's a very, she's very minor. Miss Tarot, like mm. she's actually just a spy. in the book. She's like, is is Miss Miss Tarot she, is Plato Smith's secretary, secretary yes. in both, right? She's the, yes. in the book too. Yes, because he's like, oh, uh, pass me the files on Doctor No, and and she's like, like in the movie, like they're gone, you know. Well, we don't see Miss Tarot again after that. No. I don't think we see her again after that. In the uh, book, we don't. No, no. we don't. She, she just. She, like he, he deduces that she's an agent of the of Dr. No, but we don't. Because she's Chinese. Exactly. Oh, which, by the way, uh, we had a lot of fun in the oh. Live and Let Die episode. Oh, my God. We had a lot oh. of fun in the Live and Let Die episode. I think, you know what? I am I need to have a little bit of fun in my life. we got to talk about Chigros. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> you know that... 
That's what I'm talking about. Oh, Ian man. Fleming, baby. But I think it's, no uh, limits. No it's, limits. Yeah, no. It's. The, it, <laughs> Well, first and foremost, you know, if you're wondering what the heck was that word I just uttered, it I, it is not my creation, rest assured, I'm not a crazy person. This is a term that Fleming uses in the book to describe uh, the, the, the mixed people mi of mixed race. There's a Chinese community on Jamaica, probably because Dr. Knows there, we find out he's Chinese, and of course, so it's the children of, of a Chinese mother or father and and local Jamaican uh, black dark-skinned uh, mother or father and Fleming keep he keeps on using it again and again and even Bond uh, is like a little bit fantastic like a chigro like <laughs> all right yeah. welcome to the 1950s easy reading it's a fun book love this book <laughs> <laughs> love it we talked about this on the living. Like he's, yeah. I think what I, I if this was a few months ago. I don't, if, forgive me if, if I said the same thing, but he's like racist despite himself. Yeah. It's it's just, he's not trying to be mean. He's he, sort of like walking down the street. Uh, you know, like grandpa. You know, he, he leaves GoldenEye because he's taking a break from writing Dr. No or whatever book he's using. And he walks down the street and he's like, oh, my, I, I, I say, I say, you look a little black, but also a little Chinese. Is that actually... Is that accurate? Am I, am I pinpoint accuracy right there? No, yes, man. <laughs> or well, I don't know what the accent would be. In it. Oh, fantastic. Oh, thank you. Good day. Good day. Goodbye. And he goes back to go tonight. It's an intense part in the movie, but I don't think it translates as well as it does in the page. The centipede uh, <laughs> poisoning, attempted poisoning. Man, Bond is absolutely petrified. Again, going back to uh, we say this every single episode, Fleming's descriptions. But I like, uh, I love the part where Bond notices that the hairs on the back of his neck are. Oh my God! I thought that, that in his mind, is I thought that was just a figure of speech. The hairs on the back of my neck are actually going up. <laughs> <laughs> and at one point, it's on his face, and it's it stops on his face and it's drinking the sweat mm. from, like there's moments and it's like the, it's cool it's cool centipede cr starts crawling on his legs and he's afraid it's gonna it's nip at his dick you know, it's yeah <laughs> and he's afraid and you hear his thoughts and like oh move keep moving he's like should i try and swap it no it's too risky and you hear his <laughs> thoughts and it's so tense and so tense it's so, awesome so nerving it's he one pukes of, at the end doesn't he feel sick to the stomach stomach afterwards <laughs> and I never noticed it. Noticed until I like I watched the movie. and We'll discuss it. But he does. He, he, he throws up in the movie too. Oh, it cuts away. I think it fades, I know, fades I, away when he closes the bathroom I, door. I, I, but it, yeah. But it's, we're to assume that he's uh, getting rid of some bad stuff in his tummy. And then we finally make it to Crab Key. Yeah, and, and uh, kind of like in the film, Quarrel is is not too keen. I'm going to Crab Key. He uh, took an insurance he's heard policy. the stories. Yes, he does take an insurance policy. Five 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 thousand pounds or something like that. Did, did it mention that he has a family or children to take care of? Or it's just like Bob's gonna well, catch he, him on this. He's court. going after the photographer after beating the shit out of her. I mean, I, well, he might still have a family. I yeah, have no he idea. Could have. But uh, no, he doesn't mention that specifically. He does in the movies. That he has a family. He has Carl Jr. In live and let die. Well, he doesn't mention it, but what, whatever. We'll just, you know. <laughs> right, sure, okay. Um, but uh, on the, about Coral, um, yeah, Bond mentions uh, in his internal dialogue that he didn't know Coral could be afraid of anything. So the fact that Coral is not particularly keen on landing on Crab Key is uh, strikes Bond as, as particularly interesting. Maybe an extra reason to actually go there. <laughs> if Coral doesn't want to go there, then we have to go there. <laughs> That's exactly what we have to do. Because they, uh, they just arrived in the TARDIS, so they're taking a nap, and Bond gets a vision, gets a, a walk-in by... A vision of beauty. Uh, the elegant Venus. Um, Ani, Ani Child, writer. Ani Child. I always forget that her real name is Ani Child. Ani Child, yes, exactly. And uh, she, he sees her from uh, from the back. He's sort of in the... in. in in the bushes a little bit because they've sort of uh, camouflaged in, um, themselves. Contre jour, I think she's being lit, and she, he, he sees more like a silhouette from of her. Mm. And uh, what a vision! What a vision! He notices her physique. Uh, 
shit. <laughs> she's really, she sounds really, really pretty. She's, she, she does have one particular, you were mentioning about quirks and physical quirks. She does have a physical quirk though, right? Uh, right broken here. nose. Yeah, broken nose, which doesn't seem to, uh, again, that doesn't seem to bother Bond at all, really. He doesn't really pay attention to the nose. And you yeah. know who else has a broken nose? And I only figured out after reading the book and it's not a character trait of any woman that Fleming knew, but it's a character trait that Fleming himself had. Fleming, Fleming and if you look pictures of him uh, when he was just uh, a child, and um, if you look pictures of him as an adult, he had a, he had a severely broken nose that gave him this aquiline uh, profile. A beak. Like a beak. Uh, but that's a trait that uh, he attributed to, um, to his leading lady. Good on you, Mr. Fleming. We salute thee as we drink some uh, red, red stripe. stripe beer. Yeah, we've been uh, drinking. I, I bought, bought these in honor of uh, the movie, but um, they, as soon as well, the Avengers is opening this weekend <laughs> across the world, so focus, yeah. stay focused. <laughs> uh, as soon as, uh, almost as soon as she shows up, um, like Coral shows up and she covers herself, uh, we start hearing. Mm -hmm. uh, a boat is yeah. coming. Yeah. They've been they've been uh, spotted. They have. And uh, and they, th this boat is armed and dangerous and ready and willing to fire. Before we move to that section, because uh, why uh, why do they meet um, on, a, on, a, on a child rather on the beach like that? She's actually a seashell collector. She is indeed. And. I went to so much math, man. You won't believe. Like, I have an entire section of my notes uh, just on her budget. May, may I and, ask why? Oh, my God. Because um, somebody from the 21st century, once you see here, somebody, I make $5 per seashell. <laughs> that's nothing. Like, yeah, I, but inflation, my man. That's, inflation. What I, that's why I calculated the inflation r rate. So, her, her, according to the inflation calculator... Uh, $5 in 1958 today would be $43.18. And she wants plastic surgery to fix her nose? And that's another... Th I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, 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 wait. I got... Okay. Oh, we're not done. That's true. You got like 15 pages <coughs> there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, Great radio, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, because I have... Okay, artist. another thing. Her surgery, she says uh, she would pay... And that's in British pounds, so I had to like transferring american dollars uh she needs uh, 500 pounds and it's 11 today would be 11,500 dollars uh, 500 500 pounds uh, which comes to 16 uh, around 16,000 dollars just to fix her nose just to fix her nose Jeez. but that's in 20, 16 is in 2018 dollars 16,000 dollars that's to fix her nose. Uh, i'm not i'm not very familiar with the world of plastic surgery no, and, and nose reconstruction but i if i busted my nose up i'm not sure i'd pay 16,000 dollars to fix no, it no but you could probably just like put it and it would fix you, you don't necessarily need plastic surgery if you like put it back together quickly uh so she would need uh around uh, around 372 uh, shells to pay for the operation. She's been doing it for a little while. Um, uh, she says it would take her five years, so it rounds up to around 74 shells per year, which makes it a ratio of 6.2 shells per month. So I'm not including her like her living. Does she say how often she goes to Crab Key? No, she doesn't, but she must go about Pretty often, yeah. six times per month. And she has to be pretty damn efficient because she has to find the ones that are worth five dollars. Yeah, they're not all worth five dollars. Yeah, not all worth five dollars, but it's a lot of work. <laughs> oh, yeah, but I didn't do any of it. I'm. I know, I know, but I thought it was interesting because people make fun of, especially that character, because she, 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 she's. Um, people make fun of that character. Yeah, I've heard <laughs> people. People, uh, I've heard people. You really disparage uh, Annie Ryder because she's not. They don't picture uh, her as smart, but she has obviously a. She's uh, she's the definition of a self-made woman. <laughs> yeah, no, she's a self-made woman. I mean, she she's making good money. She in the nineteen fifties, uh, she's uh, completely independent. So I'm like, that she, she no, I I, I not I, rich, I, but 
not rich, surviving. but she surviving on her own. Uh, She's very knowledgeable of animals. Yeah. She doesn't mind scorpions. She doesn't mind spiders. She doesn't mind crabs. Because there's this se- crabs of the season where I think with the crabs and the, and the insects, they. I, I don't remember that passage, but she's describing a moment of the year where the, the animals of, of, of the locale will sort of flee their, 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 in, their habitats and they'll actually pass through her home. I mean, she's so used to it. She's like, oh, it's just a bunch of crabs and scorpions. No bigs. You know, it's like, whatever. You know, she's uh, attuned with to nature. Yeah, very much so, actually. Um, so, back to our uh, uh, boat guys. Um, they, uh, like, when Bond and Quirrell and Onion Child Rider uh, hear, hear them coming, they, they hide in the beach. They try and disguise themselves. And guys would start... Yeah, and it's a scene in the, right in the, yeah, of, right the, of, the, of the, the movie. Well, the scene in the film is right out of the book, exactly. Yeah, they, like even the, I think almost most of the dialogue is intact in the movie. I think there's just one line that uh, they suppressed in the movie that they okay yeah. see you soon. They don't say in, the, <laughs> but most of like oh, we're gonna bring the dogs. Mm. So they shoot. They don't hear anything. So they're they're going back. Is, is there a moment in the in in the book where like in the movie the guy's not talking into the mic, but it sounds like he's talking <laughs> into the mic? That's a, that's a favorite goof of mine. Uh, no, it doesn't describe that. So they, after, after the, that little uh, interlude, they... they Which uh, Honey's, uh, Honey Child's boat is uh, completely ripped to shreds. Yeah. So uh, now she's... Like, and Bond feels kind of bad about the fact that... Uh, mm-hmm. We don't really see that in the movie because the movie sort of has to click along. But in the book, uh, there's a lot of Bond's internal monologue, as there should be. And he, he is, you know, he's sort of cursing himself for like, Damn it, you know, like she seems pretty sweet. She seems nice. And now she's, you know, she might be in big trouble right now because we've spotted her. And it's, it's, it's our fault that she now has to join us. And she really has no business being here. And this is a dangerous place. So that's why I like her because she's, uh, she stumbles into the adventure. Yeah. Then she has to, like, carry on. But uh, it also speaks to Bond. Like, he's not that big of a dick. He's like, he feels bad about the fact that his mission has dragged her into this. Also, I think. She's just picking up shells, man. She's like she has no beef with Doctor she No. She brings a more paternal, like part of the, like the relationship, and the character of uh, anything in writer. Um, the way I interpreted it in my mind, it's like taming the shoe because she's or, or even it's a, even in her name, Ani Child. She's a child in, in mm. the at beginning of the book, but by she's the end, either, yeah. she's like twenty. She's not old. She's twenty. She's one. Yeah, she's like the phys- youngest. Phys- physically, girl. she's a child, but mentally. I mean, she's uh, unrefined. She she's almost like a wild child, and she's hmm. she's not. Um, she's sort of like stressed out of her stressed out of her mind when they go to Doctor No's lair, and she's like in a fancy, I guess you would call it a hotel room, so to speak. She like has no idea what the hell any of this is because she's just lived in her old family home all these years on her own. Yeah. So yeah, she has no, she has no. You know, Reference points for a normalcy. Quote, sufi- yes, normalcy, civilized, uh, high tech, so to speak. You know, a room, just a room. What does a clean, uh, lavishly decorated room feel like? What does it smell like? She has no reference point for that. It makes her re- really kind of interesting. She, she, she's a, she's the funkiest like Bond girl we've had so far. Just because it's, she's coming from such a different place from anybody else we've met so far. Um. We'll discuss it when we get to the the end. But she's she's uh, pretty high on my list of Bond girls so far. I'm just gonna. She's say pretty that. cool. She's pretty cool. And and this this portion of the book starts a passage which goes through a few chapters. And you know they have to escape. You know some guards every now and then and some dogs. But when they're not doing that, when they're not hiding among the mangroves and this and that, th- there are a lot of conversations between Bond and Han and Chile and. They're really interesting conversations. They're, this isn't like Bond trying to pick up a one-night stand. This is like Bond talking to a really fast... Again, we just alluded to her, her background, which makes her sort of exotic and, and very rough around the edges. And I think Bond is legitimately, as a human being, not as someone that wants to, wants to, 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 to hook up, just as, as a human being on a humanistic level, like... Who is this person? Like, I want to talk to her to, to learn He's about fascinated her. Fascinated by yeah, um, and I really like those passages of the book. Again, Fleming doing something that, when you think about the stereotypes of Bond stories, it's Fleming doing something you might not expect. 
It's uh, it's very humanistic. It very dr- it's an emotionally genuine passage of the book where there's an actual, there's kind of a friendship bonding yeah. here. There's bonding? Uh, friendship. I, I really liked her. That's yeah. Oh, she's great. I love Honey, honey Chow. Honey Chow. And they get um, the the dogs mar- made their make their their, their appearance. Uh, they they are well these types of dog, Doberman mm, yeah. Doberman pincers. Uh, um, these swarm. Those are big dogs. Actually. Those big dogs. I'm I'm curious because you, you actually do um, work for SPCA. Have you ever seen those dogs at the SPCA? Uh, there was a Doberman a few weeks ago. I was not to touch it. <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 well, they look like very. Uh, um, Sharp dogs. They look very like. Mm. Oh, that's probably why they're used for hunting, so yeah. to speak, on fetching. I wouldn't want to be their prey, basically. No, 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 would I. Well, nor do nor do Bond, uh, Honey Chow, and Coral. <laughs> <laughs> then we have more details about um, Honey Rider. Uh, her family comes from. Uh, she's actually like a multiple generation uh, Jamaican. Yeah. The the the. the no, she's Caucasian, but she's. Jamaican. She, the family's been in Jamaica for for a while. They had a cane field, I think. Yeah. They say cane. I assume she meant sugar cane. Probably. Yes. Uh, that's what the family business was until her 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 family was was killed. Yeah. And they 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 signed the King Charles death warrant, and I actually you can actually get the uh, the warrant online, and I was curious to see if there were any writers on the and this, uh, on the people that signed. You can still see everyone that signed and. They, 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 no, there is no, no writers. There's no writers, unfortunately. Ah. That would have been cool, though. That would have been pretty cool. But no writers signed. A lot of mango. And there's talk of uh, a dragon. A dragon. Yeah. Which finally shows up. The description in the book is kind of cool. We'll get to the film version, but the description in the book, if it's night and you're sort of in the bushes and you're stressed out of your mind because Dr. Noah's men are trying, I can kind of understand why you might think. If it's like maybe not up close and you don't hear like the freaking tractor motor, <laughs> like I can sort of understand like, oh my God, what the hell is that? I'm getting out of here. Like, what's this monster? I, maybe, maybe I can Temporarily, see just, yeah. just enough to like scare the, uh, uh, the people who are uh, more afraid. Um, she does mention that she wants to be a call girl. Uh, yes. After plastic surgery. Which Bond kind of tries to discourage her from. Her fascination with becoming a call girl is interesting because for her, it's a way of making a lot of money if you're good at it and you're popular. And Bond's like, well, not everybody's good at it and not everybody's popular enough to earn that much money. You do realize that. Why don't you work in a zoo? Like he's sort of trying to ground her yeah. aspirations a little bit. Not not, not in a sort of a paternalistic way, but I think he, he's sort of like, where, where, are, you to go? where are you gonna go from a, sh- a, a, a downtrodden, abandoned home in Jamaica to a Manhattan call girl like you just you just told me 10 minutes ago you like animals why don't you want to work in a zoo like he's trying to like look you know you seem nice and you seem really, like really gutsy but like let's be focus on your passion your yeah, interest exactly. not stupid stuff um they well they are captured by well, Coral gets burnt alive unfortunately unfortunately we've had a lot of fun with Coral he's been a great guy he's been a great friend and Bond in one of the many internal he he has a very genuine love for this man he really loves his spirit he loves his character his loyalty and yeah unfortunately he bites he bites the dust in a, in a really bad way it's pretty terrible actually he gets it takes the time to like give him a last respect one of the things i found quite uh, fascinating and fun was the fact that all, all the other guys are the the ant people uh, the ant the villains um are not really um they don't care about bond they're like they, you, you can't escape so they don't really they don't mm. yes i uh, when, when they're uh, well we find out that there's no such there is no dragon it's some sort of a tractor disguised uh, to, to make look like a dragon and when they're put inside when bond and honey child as as captives are put inside the drivers are not paying the least bit of attention to them and that frustrates bond bond doesn't like that i i these guys these mother efforts are not stressed out enough they're way too professional we might we, we might be in serious trouble here but the uh, he, he kind of just deduces that because they they are still on edge uh but they he realized that 
you know, it's because he's not. A, they're not afraid of Doctor No, so they use that to their advantage. So when they they're about to rough them up, he says, "I shouldn't do that because Doctor No's not going to be happy about that." So they're, mm-hmm. oh, "Oh shit, you're oh, shit. Right. you're right, you're right." That's true. Bond will not keep instill cool, man. fear, keep but cool. Doctor No does. Doctor No does instill fear, very much, a lot of fear actually. And they're they're terrified, and um, well, we finally make it to uh, the Sister Lily and Sister Rose. That compound. <laughs> They are showed their room, and the room is uh, it's very lavish. Th- this is where, you know, I remember when we were reviewing Moonraker, the book, and we were saying, wow, doesn't this feel like this could be like an awesome, like this is like the book version of a Bond movie. Now we're sort of returning to that type of territory where it's like, this is insane. This is bizarre. This is just retarded, but in the best way possible, you know what I mean? It's like. This feels like it's entertainingly moving. retarded. Yeah, exactly. It's like it's the best retarded. Entertarded. Entertarded. Sure. Hashtag. Um, <laughs> that's what and it feels like to me, anyways. And, and there's the part. There's a part which I, like, uh, uh, Ani re- starts to really come on to Bond. She she's really. I'm like, okay, lady. Uh, we're trapped in a compound in the middle of nowhere. Uh, Armed guards, uh, it's dangerous. Uh, our friend just got murdered. Um, this is not the time for that. It's not the time for coitus. Yeah. she's. I don't know if it's she has she's like a... fun. She's having a little bit too much fun. I don't know if she has a mental... Like, I was paying attention. Did she ch- drink something? Because it's really... Okay. Like, it's weird. I'll just say that. It's mm. a weird part. She definitely wants to come. I mean, he does tell her to remain calm, and she's more than calm. She's having, like, the best time. <laughs> of her li- she's having the time of her life. <laughs> He's trying to stay cool, but he, deep down, he knows, like, we're in so much trouble. And he keeps saying that. He keeps, you know, how did the guards behave? How did, you know, Sister Lily and Sister Rose behave? You know, the structure of this sort of a compound, the fact that they are at Crab Key, in a layer that is made to look like a fancy hotel or well, something like a hotel. This, I, I am a, I am way, I am, in, I am in way over my head. I might be effed right here. <laughs> like he keeps telling himself that. And they call them patients, and then Bum like, what? Mm. And uh, they fought, they're finally, uh, uh, well, they, 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 they eat a little bit, but they, they, they almost in, immediately fall unconscious. Um, they wake up. Could like, be drugged. They're drugged. Mm-hmm. So they, they they get they sleep for almost like ten hours from Exhaust, exhaustion, probably. And when they they finally uh, get up, uh, they are invited for a late dinner with <laughs> Doctor No. Doctor No. His head was like an inverse oil drop. I'll never forget that line. <laughs> So great. Six feet tall, taller than Bond, very thin. No, six eye. six. Six six. It's like he's, he's ginormous. But he's very thin, and his body barely. He's like he's floating across the floor. Yeah. It's, like it's awesome. Sh- it's awesome. And he has no eyelashes. I think he has no no eyelashes. no hair at all. Every all every every hair was removed. His uh, lips and every feature was like kind of trimmed and made like smaller, which probably makes him more like stand apart even more. <laughs> Uh, and big, the, the, and he has contact lens, but it seems from the description of his contact lens that they are completely black. They always mention that he has black eyes, so okay. I don't know if it's because they're like one of the first. Con- he even says, "Oh, the, there's yes. been like these are brand new. Look at high-tech my contact stuff, man. It's high tech. 1958. You wearing contact lenses? What? <laughs> well, but even then, like people like actually scratch their corneas because they're not careful with the." Um, these type of technology mm. yeah, those it was mm. too new uh, and, and uh, distinct feature he has no hands no hands he has pincers pincers clap clap and which makes him I think the third villain to um, have very char- the very characteristics of animals we had in uh, Live and Die a shark with Mr. Big uh, we had um Oh, Red Grant was like a werewolf. Werewolf. And we had also, uh, what's her name? Rosa Klebb, which was a toad. Toad. We my have, favorite. My, your favorite. <laughs> and we have now 
a crab. A crab. Yeah. It's crab key. You are onto something, man. You are onto something. I read it in a book. I'll, I'll be honest, but when you know and you start paying attention, there's a team going on in every book. When there's a villain trying to t to use nature as a weapon, it always blows up. Like you know, the, the fall on your own sword type of thing. It happened to hoisted by your own baton. You know what? This is almost becoming my number one reason to read the next book. It's like, what? What? What's the animal in this one? <laughs> I, I don't know. It, it Goldfinger's a pig. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe uh, I'll pay attention. It's coming but, up next. So, but there's always a that that aspect that shows up, and you're like, wow, that they, it's there's something there. Every time there's a villain that's trying to coerce nature into become its tool, it <laughs> blows up in his face, and it does. Uh, unfortunately, later on for Doctor No, uh, he tells a story which is mm -hmm. very really long story, but it's a cool story though. It's a cool story. I like I like their dinner. The way he speaks, it's um, very monotonous, very yeah. monosyllable. Not monosyllable. That's not what I'm. But monotonous is more what I'm looking for. It's very to, it's to the point. Like Bond tries to. I, yes, I am a maniac. Yeah. I have a mania for power. Yeah, absolutely. Interesting little plot too. He's using. Uh, well, he has this guano uh, factory as as a front, so to speak. Although he is making a bit of money off of it. But in actuality, he's partnered with the villain for almost all of these books, except one, I feel, the Russians again. So the Russians are back. So kind of, by proxy, the Russians are back. But it's honestly, I feel like that's uh, that's almost an afterthought. When he wrote that novel, Fleming probably like, oh, shoot, I didn't put the Russians in. Mm. Uh, and, and the Russians are there, too. It's like it looks like an afterthought. But funnily enough, that's actually the bigger thing that's at Play. not this stupid Audubon Society material. It's more about the toppling of these uh, test rocket, uh, these mm. test flights for these rockets, and whether he's controlling them through some some sort of radio frequencies. Or <laughs> but he, but he, it's financed by the Russians. So mm. here they are again, uh, supplying material for a villain. Where it's maybe not really that neat. It's, it's like when that passage in. Um, when General G in, in From Russia With Love starts mentioning, oh, yeah, when we financed Hugo Drax, I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah, no, but it's even it's even less than that. It's uh, it's really an, almost an afterthought uh, mm. of the, the book itself. I mean, they really focus on this. We his, don't really care about the rockets. Yeah, they don't. No. It, it's just, it, it seems to be there just to justify Bond taking on him. Because if not, he's more like... Um, Conservationist, <laughs> professional conservation. polluter, I guess. Mm. He's really like uh, polluting, uh, destroying the environment. He's like a uh, unveritable terrorist, I oh, guess. Oh, there's a 2018 Bond villain. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, in in the, when he tells the story, focus on the fact that he's biracial, he's German, Chinese, that he worked for the Tong, he betrayed them, they cut off his hand. Um, he uh, made it. He, he became a doctor. Um, he used his money, converted a million. He was an accountant too for the yeah. tongs. He converted a million dollars into stamps to use as money. Later on, transferring them to back to money, and he had cosmetic surgery. And then he teamed up with the Russians, built Crab Key, and then tells the, this entire story to focus on the fact that okay, now uh, <laughs> what I'm going to do to you? Uh, you've ten pages later. You've eaten. You've rested. Uh, you the girl. Uh, I did it with a black woman. So now I'm going to do it with a white woman. I'm going to take you. I'm going to tie you to a rock, and I'm going to feed you to. Uh, crabs. Crabs going to eat you alive. I want to see how long if it's the same amount of time as it did for the black lady. And when Bond hears that, he's horrified, trying to argument with uh, Doctor No. And how Doc dare you do this to a white woman? And, and Doctor No, 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 no. I got, so I, th I got something even better for you. Oh, I cooked, uh, I cooked up something good for you, boy. Are you gonna have a <laughs> great time? You're gonna like. Mm. I'm going to La Ronde. You're, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're going to La Ronde. Uh, he has an obstacle course, yeah. and that's that is again going back to the idea of this book feeling like it should be. I mean, obviously it was eventually turned into a movie, but you know when you when I read these books, I'm trying to just think of the book. I'm, I put the movie out of my mind. This feels like it's supposed to be a movie. I made an obstacle course for you. What? <laughs> <laughs> 
And it's it's my favorite part of the book. It's pretty awesome, yeah. It, I, I, I honestly, it, I, I, I reread, I listened to it twice on audiobook because I'm like, okay, I think I missed something. So I re listened to it and I reread it completely uh, by uh, old school uh, when I was doing my notes because I love this part. It's pretty cool. I mean, and it's really, uh, I mean, Bond is really put physically and mentally, obviously. To a great extent, he's he's really put to the test. I mean, there's. Uh, let me see if I can get the no, the the exact. Uh, ah, um, now he was finished. Now it was the end. Now he would fall flat, and slowly fight to death. No, he must drive on, screaming until his flesh was burned to the bone. The skin must have been gone from the knees. Uh, and uh, in a moment, uh, blah, blah blah blah. And uh, there's a moment. Oh. How much, how much, uh, how much more could he take now? Bond's lips drew back from his teeth, and he snarled into the darkness. It was an animal sound. He had come to the end of his re human reaction to pain and adversity. Dark knew had got him cornered, but there were animal reserves of desperation left in, and in uh, left and in a, st a strong animal. Those reserves are deep. I'm like. I'm getting hair on my chest just reading those passages. This, this is like, rah, this is like a pulpy, like, Eman type of our, uh, hero. Like, this is, Bond has arrived. Well, it's, well, Bond has arrived. No, but it, I, it, you, it, you, that's, that's not Bond arriving. That, that is a human being. And not every, and not every human being would have that sort of a reserve, but it's, but I it think. But it tests the character. <coughs> excuse me. Oh, no, absolutely. And it's, it's him. It's basically it's the last straw. It's the last line of defense. That last little bit of juice you have in you, you don't even think anymore. There's no more. There's no rhyme or reason. It is just a ma it's fight or flight. And Bond is a fighter, and that's that's where that happens. Like he survives the electricity, the heat, the heat. heat he has uh, to like climb, um, and they're peering. They're it's taking occasionally a look at like. Him. Uh, mm. Yeah. Taking, writing down notes on his Weird success. Um, the, the tarantulas. The tarantulas nest that he has like to. He's made a. He's made a. Uh, and th that's the difference spear. between book and movie uh, doctrinal. In this the, is purposeful. Yes, but in the movie, uh, you know, when Bond tries to pocket the knife, Bond, uh, the doctrinal tells Bond to like drop it. I saw you uh, leave that that knife there. And book bomb is able to get mm -hmm. a knife, a lighter, and when he's uh, put in the obstacle course, he forges a lance that he can use. And all of this, like he, throughout the, the course, he is able to use these tools to survive, and it, may, it puts him against uh, the weirdest creature <laughs> thing he has, like a man-eating octopus. A giant octopus. Apparently this thing is... Its size is legendary, yeah. according to Ian Fleming's description. What a weird! <laughs> but there, I've sh I've shown you the video, and I don't think I'll post it also on the Facebook page. But they, they there's been reported and film uh, attack from octopus, octopuses, octopi, octopi, and the, these things are dangerous. Like they describe the beak as being like uh, all, all, uh, as tough as Kevlar, actually being able to bite through. Kevlar, if you get that thing around your around your wrist, you have no more wrist. So Bond, when he's faced with that thing, he's like, "Damn, I'm I'm screwed." Mm. I mean, like. The, but he allows himself as he's being tugged down by the the tentacles. He takes his lance, his 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 cheap lance, and he dives down and he, I think he pokes one of the eyes out. Yes, yeah. and it it goes away. Yeah, it goes away. I mean, probably doesn't kill it, but I think this octopus is just, like. He's covered with oil because I think it. Or the um, the ink. I ink. Think, ink, yeah. Like he's messed up. He's beaten to hell, but he managed to uh, crawl his way. I think he finds. He a climbs path. over the fence or whatever. Does he climb over the fence? Or I think he, he finds the path that they used to build the the obstacle course. Because there's a there's a boat uh, going back to what Doctor Noah's front is. Is this guano? Uh, guano uh, being an excellent fertilizer, apparently. So there's this boat. Uh, that's arriving on that very day, ironically enough, to pick up some guano. And Bond, uh, basically his strategy is uh, eat shit and die. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he, there's a, somebody who's putting like guano or uh, there's a, there's a, I, I crane that he, uh, he 
he commandeers, um, kills the guy who was driving it, picks up, a, continues where the guy left off and just Dump, drops. Dumps it on. Uh, on Dr. No. Takes a huge dump. <laughs> dumps <laughs> it on Dr. No. It's an undignified way, though, death. Extremely it's undignified. A, it's, it's like. <laughs> and uh, so when he kills Dr. You no, know, it creates havoc. All the, all the people are like, oh, f- losing their, their stuff. Um, he encounters uh, Ani Raidu. Yeah, a complete random. But she, th- that's what I like, because uh, she actually saved herself, because yeah. she's smarter than Dr. You no. Know. She knows animals. She knew that the crabs would just like mind their own business and don't not touch her. She, so she, uh, with great effort, she managed to free herself. She grabs some clothes and she's uh, in her mind. She's going to kill Doctor No. She's oh, yeah. she's out for revenge because she in her head that uh, Bond's already gone and uh, she uh, her and Bond briefly struggle against each other. Well, they, they don't know one is the other. So, but then when they they realize that they they like oh let's take it. let's get away. So they leave. They steal the they commandeer the uh, the dragon. The dragon and. It, Picks up the story. Picks up uh, after they've, they've escaped. Uh, uh, the entire Doctor No operations. Uh, I think they're sending the army to dismantle it, basically. Mm. Uh, and uh, well, the lieutenant, the colonial government, uh, government governor, pardon me, is like begrudgingly, <laughs> you know, thanks Bond for his help, and thank God this is over. And then, and Bond gets to recoup with. Uh, with Honey Child, he he uh, he owes her some slave time, as she says. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> do as you're told is the nice last little one. ending to the movie. It's a nice little line. I like that. Uh, so they, before we go on our final submission, 1958, the book was released on that date. So round up a uh, little quick quick things that happened. January 4th, Sputnik one one is launch uh, from Russia. Strangely, I didn't know that, but. Um, in, in the same month, Explore One, the first uh, successful, is uh, launched January thirty first. So the re- like, I don't know if it, it, they planned the space it, race, but the space race, man. And in a month, you're like, okay, we don't have a, a satellite. Okay, by the end of the month, I want a satellite in space. Go, guys, make it happen. Actually, the word area of space was first coined on February second, uh, nineteen fifty eight, at. Uh, I don't know where uh, I read that, but it's on the Wikipedia page. Um, uh, oh, Elvis Presley, back again. Uh, he becomes uh, a U.S. private number uh, 5331071. Ain't nothing like a hound dog. Um, and after that, we have March. Uh, Explorer 3 is sent. Uh, oh, uh, the bridge of the on the River Kwai uh, with... Um, Obi- what's his name? Uh, Obi Wan Guinness. Alec Guinness wins seven awards on uh, during on March twenty six. Uh, Nikita Khrushchev uh, becomes the prime uh, primer of Soviet on March twenty seventh. Um, Castro's revolu- revolutionary army begins its attack on Havana on April third. Uh, oh, and Dwight Eisenhower is the first American president to be broadcast on color television, live and in color. And Pizza Hut is founded on June fifteenth. I didn't know it was that old. Yeah, neither did I. Um, after that, we have uh, um, Pizza, oh, pizza the, Hut's like the, the McDonald's of pizza. Something kind. Of <laughs> uh, yes, uh, something that I found kind of cute and fun. Uh, the first video game, Tennis for Two, is invented uh, in uh, on October eighteenth of uh, that year. Uh, oh, and the uh, oh. Diamond, you know that diamond that's allegedly cursed. It, it, it's it's reference in Titanic. Uh, it's the diamond. It's, it's it's apparently a cursed diamond. It well basically donated to the Smithsonian Institute, and we have a few birds. Um, some of them are more or less um, related to. Oh oh, I forgot one date. December 29th, the rebel troops under Che Guevara begin to ev- uh, invade Santa Clara, Cuba. So it's. Uh, the fall of uh, the, uh, the the, the, the Batista, regime. yeah, uh, regime. Um, so, Bert's we have Matt Frewer, um, Canadian actor, Max Edrum. I don't know if you uh, know him. Yeah, I think he's a really skinny, looks like a skeleton. It's a funny voice. I did like he does a lot of cartoon voices. Uh, Sharon Stone was born on March tenth of nineteen fifty eight. 
she was apparently uh, they wanted her for I don't know if, if there's if, if there's any truth, but they wanted her for the role of uh, Electra King. That's what I heard. Mm, could have worked. Could have worked. Uh, March twenty first, Gary Oldman um, was born. Um, Gary Oldman. <laughs> Uh, we have uh, Michelle Pfeiffer and uh, Alec Baldwin, both born in uh, April 1958. Really? Michelle Pfeiffer? Mm -hmm. Jeez, I'm Catwoman. Hear me roar. On March 30th, I forgot, uh, Maurice LaMarche, uh, Canadian voice actor, Egan in the, on the real Ghostbusters. Mm. Uh, okay. Did an episode with uh, the guys of uh, James Bonding. Oh. It's actually uh, one of their cool guest sounds like a cool guy bruce campbell uh and uh prince uh are both born on um, uh, the month of june 1958 party man party man and the chin himself uh kevin bacon born on july uh 8 uh canadian icon i guess uh, terry fox uh, born mm. on july 28 uh, angela bassett you know that's that's the thing angela bassett and madonna black panther's mom but uh, <laughs> And uh, well, what's her name in the well? I don't know what her character's name is. But. No, no, but I mean Madonna. Uh, both born on August 16th. Wow, it's a hell of a date. Tim Burton was born on uh, Jeez, August 25th. Huge names. This is a big year. Oh, and August 29th, uh, Michael Jackson born. It's a lot of icons on, are yeah, born no on kidding. that date. Uh, Jim Lee Curtis was born on November 22nd, and. Uh, <laughs> This is the only Bond, like the only Bond act, like legit Bond actress I was able to find. Uh, Lynn Holly Johnson was born on December 13th. Do you remember where she's from? Now go put some clothes on and I'll <laughs> buy you an ice cream. Uh, leftovers. There aren't that many. No. Well, uh, the, the, the fact that there is an obstacle, an intentional expertly devised obstacle course does not feature in the film so that that's sort of a leftover i mean he does go through some obstacles but it's not planned it's not intentional yeah it's not a, like yeah, there you go guy mm. it's, like that's that's something i know it's sort of in the movie but that's something you know what they, they can easily recycle and and oh, yeah. i'm like honestly like i mentioned it as almost as a joke but would you would you accept like genetically modified animals in a Bond movie. I mean, think about it. In uh, Annabelle, the movie and the book, you have pigs that have been trained to eat people. I don't remember that. Could, could they could they have something like that? Animals that have been coerced into like eating people. Well, if you can make a dog, uh, if you can train dogs to fight and to to attack people, I'm sure you can train some other animals to do nasty little things. Hmm. Wouldn't be surprised. It's an idea at that. Uh, fruit basket. <laughs> fruit basket doesn't make it into the movie. Yeah, that's. Oh, our two friends that unfortunately get killed. Uh... That's, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's We're talking about details. Like, yeah. no, there's nothing made. Well, the uh, the whole guano Ottoman society thing doesn't really. Uh, does it doesn't warrant to being recycled though. No, you want leftovers. Yeah, no, there's there's not many. Like, honestly, the book. And I can see why they picked the book, that book, to adapt as the first movie because it's a really, like, pulpy uh, action adventure story. When you take the basic elements of it, it, it I, I can see why they they picked that book. Uh, it also meant that they didn't have to travel to too many locations. You know, Jamaica was pretty much the only one they had. Maybe a little bit of filming in, at Pinewood, but other than that, it was a fairly simple uh, shoot. Yeah, so. They didn't have that much money anyway. No. So it's only like a million dollars now. So. Yeah. Um, final summation. Honestly, I might. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to scout because I might see controversial, something very controversial. It might be my. Like right now, I I think I liked it more than, than From Russia with Love. Mm. Which I don't know if I'd rank them all just yet. We should probably should do a rankings episode. Uh, when we're yeah, done I, think I will stop doing that with this episode, but, but <laughs> um, I'll rank the Bond girls though because we've been doing that pretty constant, constantly. Mm. Uh, honestly, I struggle with with uh, Omni Child Rider. At first, I'm like, no, she's she's dumb, but I'm like, she's really the type of Bond girls I really enjoy in, in the movies. And in the end, when I I noticed the trick that Bond, that Bond Fleming was doing with the name 
on the child. She's a child and she grows up. I'm like, you know what? You're like, I'm young. No, no, no. I mean, she grows up mentally. She expands. She she becomes a, a, like a more uh, complete character. I'm like, she might she might be my number one. No, yeah, there you go. And she's a very interesting one. She's a lot of fun. She's, she says very interesting things. Her background also makes it so that for Bond, it's a very interesting character. And for the readers, of yeah. course. She's basically a wild child. You use, I think that's the term you used earlier in the conversation. She's a little, she's a little bit feral, if you will. Um, and uh, so, no, I, I agree. I can't, uh, I can't really, but I think I still like Galabrand the most. That's sort of the character I like, which is funny because we were talking about you. Those are the, maybe the characters you like the least because they're already very well trained in that. But, but Gal is still my, he, she's still my girl. Yeah, no. Uh, but High Child's not too far behind, though. I mean, no, I, I, wh who have we had? Oh, I, Solitaire. Hmm. They, they have been, since Moonraker, they've been pretty consistently good. I, I kind of like Tiffany Case as well. Uh, but I would agree, maybe Honey Chow would second, maybe she might be fighting for third. I mean, Gala is still up there, but uh, mm -hmm. I, I, do, I do like Honey Chow quite a bit, yeah. That being said, uh, I, I think we uh, are way, we've, we've talked about the book completely, so we're gonna wrap it, this up. Edgar, where can people find us online? They can find us online. No, I I'm joking. Know. Of course they can. Of course you can, listeners. And we invite you cordially to find us online. Among them, the Facebook page to search for the James Bond Complex. Use the same search words on Instagram. Uh, find us on Twitter, at The Bond Complex. There's a www.thejamesbondcomplex.com. There's Anchor, who we thank for being our actual host. But you can also subscribe through iTunes. Uh, while you're at it, you know, if you got nothing better to do, leave a little five star review. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just saying if you're twiddling your thumbs and you got nothing to do with your fingers and you got a keyboard in front of you. Uh, we are both individually on Twitter. I'm at double O pop, the word double underscore O H underscore pop. Matt O'Clair. And just as uh, James Bond always returns, so too with the James Bond complex in. Dr. No, circa 1962. Merci beaucoup et à la prochaine. Au revoir.